Hello viewers, welcome to Gouda Drone Racing's review of the Audi RS3, which I am going to begin by talking for just a little while about the Ford Fiesta ST. The ST, it's pretty much what we at GRNR think is the ideal hot hatch. It's affordable, it's got a decent amount of power but doesn't go crazy, it's light, it handles beautifully, it's nimble and it just inspires a lot of confidence and fun without ever going too far. So why am I banging on about the Fiesta ST again? Well, here I have all of the technical specifications and press releases and everything about the RS3. And if you have a flick through, you'll see that ostensibly it's just another whole hatch, but it, it weighs 1.5 tonnes and it, it doesn't just have a little bit more power. It's got 400 horsepower and it's got four wheel drive and torque vectoring and it costs 50,000, 50,000 pounds, 50 grand for a hot hatch. I give up. Let's, let's just calm down for a second, shall we? Yes, £50,000 is an awful lot of money. But what do you get for that? Well, on the RS3, you get four-wheel drive. You get a two-and-a-half-litre five-cylinder engine. You get torque vectoring. You get Nappa leather inside a very fancy interior. You get a really big boot. You get a 0 to 62 mile an hour time of under four seconds. And all of those things are things that the Fiesta, well, it just doesn't have. And then... Well, then there's the way that it sounds. Somewhat at Audi still likes tradition, the RS3 has a warbly five-cylinder engine. It's two and a half litres and yes, it's turbocharged, but that turbo means 400 horsepower and 500 newton metres. It also means that the RS3 will hit 62 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds and wang its way on to 174 miles an hour if you spend a bit more money to up the limiters. But the most important thing about that engine is that it makes a noise that will instantly have you thinking of forests and Group B, a wonderful, evocative, soulful noise from what is, at its core, just a family-sized hatchback. <laughs> no. Anyway, that 2.5-litre five-cylinder engine revs to 7,000 RPM and it produces all of its torque between 2,250 and 5,600. It has a seven-speed automatic gearbox and sends all of that torque out to all four wheels through that torque vectoring system. And, nerd alert, the firing order of that engine is one, two, three, four, five, which is pretty unusual, but that's one of the reasons it sounds so good. That, as well as the fact that the RS3 has what Audi calls with a totally straight face, a fully variable flap. Now. Here's the extremely clever bit. That four-wheel drive system has, in essence, thrown away what it is that makes most four-wheel drive systems work. There is no rear axle differential on the RS3. Instead, each drive shaft has its own multiple disc clutch, electronically controlled. That means that when torque is split in the middle to send however much torque is needed front or back, these second sets of clutches then increase or decrease the torque to each individual wheel as required. In uber layman's terms, that means that the RS3's brain can work out which is the outside wheel and send a lovely big dollop of torque through to it, which means you've got more traction and you can corner like a hero no matter your ability. And it has a mode that allows you to drift because it sends all of the torque and for complicated maths reasons that means it's 1750 newton meters of torque not 400 to one single wheel meaning it'll easily break traction but this being audi it's not called drift mode it's called the incredibly incredibly exciting rs torque rear now that is an awful lot of technology for a whole hatch and an awful lot of money so I'm not sure there's much point in putting this through our patented five-step hot hatch test which if you want to see and work it out for yourself you can watch in our Cooper Born review up, up there in the corner so with this car I think I think we've got two questions to answer does it work and is it worth it well this interestingly is a fast Audi that has it's got some character and it's not just that lovely sound of the five pot 
it is almost everything else. Firstly, when you stick your foot to the floor and really sewn up everything, you get a little shimmy and it's not that traditional front wheel drive hot hatch torque steer. No, this is the rear braking traction when all the power gets sent backwards. And then there's the way this thing corners. There's no Audi understeer. It doesn't feel like it's going to just fly off into the distance. You can have confidence when you pitch it in and then keep some throttle in there and pull yourself around. Then there's the way it accelerates when you get it going. The 0-62 time is 3.8 seconds, which is faster than a Ferrari F430. And then there's the brakes, which are carbons as standard and massive on the front. So when you stick your foot onto the brake and summon up all the stopping power, you will completely rip your own face off. It is quite the thing that Audi have created here. It's also, uh, well, it's pretty funky inside. The dash mounts the two air vents either side of the wheel, making it look either like a spaceship or like you just being cooled by one of those big fans they use in Formula One. It's not, um, it's not perfect. Take the seven speed automatic gearbox, which works really well, but has no perma manual setting. So with all that power at the top of the rev range, you sort of end up having to constantly take over and then it pops itself back into D mode and you have to keep reminding it that actually you want a different gear. And then there's that fancy torque vectoring system which works incredibly well and provides a lot of grip. But the way that it works can be a little bit unsettling. It takes some time to work out how to drive this car. Let me explain. As you turn into a corner, you can have lots of confidence and turn it and you've set yourself up. And then you'll find in the middle of it that the car has realised that all of the traction is on the outside front wheel and suddenly it'll send a dollop of torque to that wheel and you'll have more grip than you had before and you'll have to adjust yourself in the middle of the corner. You've got to set yourself up and take a corner just with the expectation that things may change ever so slightly. And then there's the steering, which is, I mean, it's quick. It's not the quickest rack in the world, but it's perfectly good for setting a car up, but then it is completely numb. I, it's in dynamic mode and I could still steer with just a couple of fingers. It doesn't really ever get heavy at all. So you're sort of relying on all of your other senses to work out when things are changing around you, which, you know, not ideal, but it is sharper than almost any fast Audi I've driven for a very long time. And once you spend some time getting used to it, once you've worked out some of those quirks, it it does become, does become quite good. When it's sending power to that outside wheel, you, you can really lean quite hard on the tyre. You can pitch it into a corner and add a little bit more throttle and just keep going. And that's partly because they've added more camber onto the wheels, which means you can really find more of a contact patch as you turn in hard. And then there's the fact that it'll do 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. And this car is, at the end of the day, it is heroically fast. It is stick a cape on it and save the world fast. Once you get used to its quirks, it becomes a finely machined tool that you can use to extract an awful lot more than really you're probably capable of. After everything is done, it'll then calm right back down into being just another Audi A3. Although there is quite literally no way anyone will ever think it's just another A3. Just look at it. But the main thing, for all its foibles, for all the weirdness and the time it takes to get used to it, and all its abilities, the main thing you feel when you're driving the RS3 is, well, it's safety. It's that everything is going very fast but never in any kind of danger. Take, for example, when you stick your foot to the floor and you get that little shimmy from the rear. It's a little shimmy and it's fun and you can feel that traction has definitely gone, but at no point do you feel like you really need to do anything about it. It's like the car's just gone, hey, see that? Fun, isn't it? You like that? Do you want some more of that? We can do more. You don't need to do anything. I can provide some more of that. We'll do more. Yeah, you can 
because it sends all of its power to the back, you can finish off a tight corner by straightening it up with the throttle, but there's very little else that's coming to you. It's not like you ever really need to correct what you're doing. You can just point it at a corner and everything will be done. It's like you've taken a hot hatch and you've sort of shaved the edges off, made it nice and safe. You can hand it over to your toddler and they can chew on the edge and it'll be fine. But a hot hatch is, isn't it meant to have edges? It's meant to be that kind of fun.